It's 2 a.m. You're right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and then suddenly you come across a milky sea that looks like something out of a fantasy movie. Could this be the gateway to heaven, or are you simply imagining it like you're in some kind of weird dream? This might have been the case for a handful of sailors who happened to come across a milky sea some 10,000 years ago. What was this strange phenomenon, and why was it taking place so hauntingly in the middle of the ocean? In 2019, skippers of the Ganesha, a superyacht that was sailing around the world, found themselves surrounded by a milky sea right in the middle of the Indian Ocean. They were astonished. Was some mythical creature hunting them? After all, once you've heard stories of sailors being seduced by sirens, anything is possible, right? The bewildered crew decided to take photographs of this strange phenomenon, just to make sure they weren't losing their minds. They took the first photo using a GoPro, but the image came out very distorted, so they used a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus to take the second photo. This one came out much clearer, and it captured the milkiness as a green luminescence released by the water. Yet these photos were extremely unique because milky seas occur only twice a year. And until that photo, there had actually never been a photograph or visual recording of a milky sea. Scientists had to simply rely on the eyewitness accounts of sailors. At the time of the event, the Ganesha superyacht was sailing close to the coast of Indonesia. According to the skipper, Captain Lemons, the Milky Sea was so massive that they could barely see anything beyond the sea. And rightly so, because satellite data showed that the sea was more than 40,000 square miles in size. Milky Seas are some of the rarest phenomena on Earth. They're caused by the concentration of bioluminescent bacteria on the ocean surface. Instead of these bacteria glowing the usual green or blue, they take up a unique white glow. One theory suggests that this white glow could be the saprophytic relationship taking place between the glowing bacteria and a unique and rare species of microalgae. But here's where it gets even stranger. Usually, when you disrupt the surface of green or blue glowing bacteria in the water, they glow brighter. But when the Ganesha crew collected a bucket sample of the milky white bacteria and began stirring it, the glow became darker. To this day, scientists have no idea what this milky white bacteria is, and why it behaves so differently from other bioluminescent bacteria in the ocean. But they're increasingly confident that with satellite imaging, they might be able to solve this strange phenomenon in the near future. Interestingly, the sea still continues to provide us with even stranger occurrences. In June 2011, scientists discovered something out of this world on the ocean bed of the Baltic Sea. Known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly, it consisted of a 70-meter-long, weirdly shaped object that was more than 100 meters beneath the ocean surface. Conspiracy theories began circling around that it was the remains of a UFO that had crashed thousands of years ago. Others claimed that it was the last remains of the lost city of Atlantis that had sunk thousands of years ago. But after a group of divers collected samples from the strange object in 2019, scientists finally figured out how this strange object was formed. Well, it turns out that the Baltic Sea Anomaly is just a glacial deposit. According to scientists who are based at Stockholm University, the Baltic Sea was formed during a series of glacial movements at the peak of the Ice Age. And so, the Baltic Sea anomaly is actually a leftover rock from this exhausting process. The strange rock was first discovered in 2011 by Swedish explorer Peter Lindbergh, together with his team of marine explorers who were searching for shipwrecks on the seabed. Now, here's where it gets weird. Despite the Stockholm scientists claiming that it's just a glacial deposit, Mr. Lindbergh maintains that this anomaly is not an earthly structure. According to the diver and his team, their electrical equipment suddenly stopped working when they got to within 200 meters of the object. Could the scientists be covering up for a bigger story behind the scenes? Yet, as we go deeper down the rabbit hole, here's another phenomenon that makes things even scarier. In fact, you might think that there are still some giant sea creatures from the age of reptiles still living in our oceans. After all, we've barely scratched the surface of ocean discoveries, haven't we? Even with all the technology that we have in the 21st century. It's called the mysterious Julia Sound, 
and more than two decades later, scientists are yet to discover its origin. If anything, it sounds like something right out of a science fiction movie. In March 1999, the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration recorded a strange sound. The sound was so loud that it could be heard over the entire Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array for over 3,000 miles. The bizarre sound lasted for only 15 seconds, but it opened a Pandora's box of conspiracies. The sound was believed to be that of a giant creature lurking deep in the ocean depths. And judging from how far the sound traveled, many people believe that the creature was extremely large, perhaps even a hundred times bigger than a blue whale. While the origin of the strange sound has never been discovered, a group of scientists have suggested that it could have been rock movements from the ocean floor that triggered the sound. But have a listen. Does that sound like rock movements to you? But away from strange giant creatures in the deep, have you ever wondered why some beaches look like they're bleeding? This strange phenomenon is known as a red tide, and it takes place when certain types of algae grow out of control and change the color of the water to either brown, green, and of course red. Interestingly, nearly every body of water contains some kind of algae, but in the case of a red tide, there's an unusually high concentration of algae in the water. Red tides have been taking place since the dawn of time, but human interference through the dumping of chemicals from factories, farming, and sewage treatment plants has made red tides even more dangerous. Today, red tides contain harmful algae blooms. The algae in these waters produce powerful toxins. These toxins are so potent that they can decimate fish populations in a week, as well as contaminate any shellfish, birds, or mammals that survive the toxic water. That's why when people eat the shellfish or sea fish living in these algae-infested waters, they can be life-threatening. In response, most governments and local councils have restricted fishing in regions that are prone to red tides. It's not strange to see, during red tides, beaches covered with the bodies of dead fish stretching for miles. The fish either ingested the toxins, or the oxygen levels in the water became so low that they're unable to breathe. Today, scientists monitor red tides through the use of satellites in the Earth's orbit. The satellites also track weather patterns to determine regions where red tides are more likely to occur. And now, let's cap things off with a strange phenomenon that once puzzled scientists. But after a recent experiment, they discovered its secret. These strange circles were once called the mysterious crop circles of the ocean floor. They could stretch up to 7 feet in diameter and were first discovered in 1995 off the coast of Japan. Many fishermen, local divers, and sailors simply referred to them as mystery circles. For over a decade, the phenomenon remained a mystery in the scientific community. However, in 2011, scientists discovered that these mysterious circles were being formed by an unlikely culprit, the male pufferfish. By observing a group of eight males, scientists found that these pufferfish would spend up to two weeks swimming repeatedly in a circle, as they used their fins to dig trenches on the sandy ocean floor. The reason? These spirographs were being constructed by the pufferfish to attract females. In fact, some of the fish could be seen purposefully decorating their circles with coral and shell fragments. The males' movements were also observed to stir up fine sand particles in the middle of the circle. They were creating an attractive nest for the females. If the female pufferfish was impressed with the design, as well as noticed that the male was a suitable mate, she would lay her eggs in the middle of the nest. Now, here's where it gets a little funny. Once the mating was over, the male would stop looking after the circle, and once the eggs hatched, they would ditch the nest altogether. Can you imagine paying for a mortgage for your home, and once your kids are all grown up, you decide to ditch your home without even selling it? That's insane!